Welcome to the Bearcats Den with President Taylor. I'm Dr. Ivy Taylor, your host and president of Russ College. For today's show, our guest is a very important member of the team here at Russ College. We are joined today by Dr. Merrick Seymour, who is Dean of the Russ College Division of Education. Welcome, Dr. Seymour. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. It's wonderful to have the opportunity to chat with you for a little bit about your work here at Russ College, which is so important. Of course, most HBCUs were founded as teaching institutions, Absolutely. and so the education division really is a bedrock of our institution. But before we talk about the education program here, tell us a little bit about you. Uh, sure, sure. So first of all, thank you, uh, Madam President, for this opportunity uh, to, to share this time with you. So it's not a lot to say about me, but there's mm -hmm. a little bit. So mm -hmm. I am a career educator. I am one of those few uh, African-American males who went to college to become a teacher. Okay. Um, I stayed in the program because the dean called me by name. Mm. Um, I've had a career in several states as a uh, classroom teacher as an administrator, as a campus administrator, and through, up through the ranks of, of higher ed. And so uh, as a result of those experiences, here I am today. Well, I'm curious, what originally sparked your interest in being a teacher? So, interesting question. Um, so like most educators, um, I believe educators are not made. They're born as something within them that they're mm -hmm. gifted to do, is they, uh, they just have to be honed um, and, and their, their irons sharpened. Uh, for me, it was that whole idea of being able to share what I know with others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was one of those uh, students who stayed after class to help the teacher uh, set up the classroom for the next day. You know, I was the one um, who would uh, line up the, the, uh, the my cousins and so on to talk <laughs> and tell and teach and you, and you better do this and you got to do it this way um, and 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 I think as I went through uh, elementary high school um, it just became stronger and stronger that feeling that gosh I think this is what I'm supposed to do and as a result of one visit uh, to my alma mater um, I realized yeah, this is the lane okay. and I've, I've not regretted it one day so before we talk uh, a little more about Rust and our program. Tell us your perspective on some of the challenges that teachers face in K through 12 classroom in 21st century America. Sure, sure. So um, one of the classes that I teach right now, Foundations of Education, uh, we're talking about this very thing. Mm -hmm. what, what are some of the things that, that draw individuals to the profession, but what are some of the challenges? Mm -hmm. And nationally, we know that there's a gigantic shortage um, um, where there are 10 to uh, 20,000 teachers coming into the profession, 30 to 40,000 are leaving, leaving the profession, wow. right? And so we know that there's a, that's a challenge. We know that there's a challenge uh, with compensation, um, but any true educator is really not driven by compensation. Mm -hmm. the, med, the, the real magic happens if a teacher feels supported mm -hmm. in a classroom, if, they, if, if they're in an environment where they can practice their craft of teaching. Mm -hmm. And so a challenge is, um, do, do educators feel safe mm -hmm. in classrooms? And you, are, you know all of the things that have gone on uh, throughout our country, shootings and, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, the things that go on, on have been going on on campuses, that impacts teachers. Even beyond the physical safety, uh, this idea that the classroom has become a new political battleground absolutely. as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and again, in the middle of that, you have the, the teacher mm -hmm. who still has this love for transferring knowledge, this, the, the art of teaching and learning. And you're right, it's now become a political situation where um, the, the art has been taken away from the, the main focus of, of a student's day, of a teacher's mm -hmm. day, mm -hmm. absolutely. So tell us how you are preparing the young people that come through our doors here at Russ College to go out and address these challenges. So, so, so first of all, I'd like to back up and say, um, so I stand on some, some broad shoulders mm -hmm. here at Russ College, and as you mentioned, most HBCUs started out as teacher norm mm -hmm. schools, training individuals to mm -hmm. go out into the world. And so I proudly accept uh, my assignment knowing that, that Russ College is responsible for an enormous amount of educators and administrators in mm -hmm. mid, uh, mid uh, Mississippi and, and the country, right? And so for us, um, 
a couple things that we're doing to address the challenges. So one, in our curriculum, we are, are, are introducing students to real life uh, situations. In fact, our, uh, we, you know, we've revamped our staff and our environment. Thank you for the team that's helped us move mm -hmm. into our new space. Uh, but we are, we've, we've revamped and restaffed with uh, practitioners mm -hmm. who are not individuals who taught years ago, mm -hmm. but who've recently taught and who are recent administrators who understand what's going on right now in schools. And so what, uh, what our faculty is doing is we're integrating those real life, real time situations mm -hmm. into our instruction now. Uh, and and COVID-19 helped us uh, punctuate, you mm -hmm. know, the importance of how do you deal with, you know, the emotional stress that students deal with mm -hmm. while dealing with your own stressors. Mm -hmm. um, so we are, we are incorporating real life situations. Another way is we have, uh, we have reached out to our local districts and so we're forming an advisory committee oh, that will com wonderful. be composed of superintendents, uh, master teachers, our own students, our own faculties, so that we will have everyone at the table mm -hmm. to talk about what's mm -hmm. going on, what's needed today, what's needed tomorrow mm -hmm. in the classroom. I firmly believe that if we are creating educators that are going to go out into the field, then the field should have some input on yes. what we are doing to build them and make them uh, qualified educators. But then finally, the last thing that, that we're talking about um, is I have a personal agenda for black males in education. And so what we're looking at is how do we uh, attract, support, and graduate men of color mm -hmm. into public classrooms throughout mm -hmm. our state, throughout our country with that good old Russ seal on their mm -hmm. back, right? And so we're looking at uh, developing what's called, what, what, what will be called, the Academy for Males of Color in Education mm -hmm. at, at Russ College. And mm -hmm. so those are just some of the things that we're doing to address the national needs and national concerns as it pertains to, to educators right here at Russ College. Well, those are some exciting strategies. I certainly believe having setting up an advisory committee is a wonderful approach because it gives the opportunity for people in the community to be uh, engaged with uh, helping us to build a better program here at Russ. Um, so I'm Absolutely. excited to hear about that. Absolutely. And then I've had a personal interest in the idea of creating a stronger pipeline of mm -hmm. black male teachers right. dating back to my time as a mayor right. when I signed on to President Obama's My Brother's Keepers program mm -hmm. and we we had put together a, a group of folks from across different sectors in the city to figure out look at the data about black males and figure out what would be some strategies to help move the needle in a positive direction sure. And one thing we kept coming back to was uh, black male teachers, mm -hmm. the incredible impact uh, on uh, students of color when they have a black male teacher. But I've, and I don't know if any empirical studies have been done, but I've also thought beyond the education angle, imagine for us as a society, if people's first um, impression uh, of a black male was a positive figure of authority, you know, um, regardless of their color. Right. You know, uh, for for uh, people who are white, you know, Latino, other races, to encounter a black male as a teacher in elementary school, I think that would kind of set a standard in their mind um, that they may not uh, always rely on negative stereotypes when they sure. encounter black males. Sure. sure. Well, if you think about it, uh, Madam President. Um, it's not only uh, an advantage, uh, benefit to black students to see a black male, but it's mm -hmm. an advantage to all students. Mm -hmm. if, you, if, if you look at history, many times students don't understand another culture because they haven't been exposed to another culture. So I think of it as uh, students who are not exposed to a black male educator, mm -hmm. they're at a disadvantage. Yes. Society has cheated them out of understanding <laughs> a whole population of people. And so, so it is urgent to, to us to help that, at a, to help that along, even as an educator prep program. Mm -hmm. How do we expose all students mm -hmm. to every aspect of culture? And you know, black men are not a missing part <laughs> of, our, mm -hmm. of our culture. And so it's important that uh, students uh, see black males. When you were in the classroom as a teacher, could tell us about some of the experiences you had as a black male teacher walking in 
Um, did you teach in some diverse environments? What kind of reactions well, did you get? <laughs> so most of my uh, classroom experience was inner city. Mm -hmm. um, and the populations were predominantly African-American, Hispanic mm -hmm. uh, American, right? And I could, I'm dating myself, but my first year of teaching was the year that Barney the Dinosaur <laughs> came out, right? And so you can imagine um, that was a hot thing. Mm -hmm. Parents were buying Barney, and so uh, rather than go against the grain, I mm -hmm. went with the grain. Mm -hmm. And so um, you asked about you know some of my experiences. Initially, I you know again because it was a female-dominated profession. I was one of few mm -hmm. in the building, mm -hmm. especially a black male. Mm -hmm. And my first year of teaching was pre-K four. Mm. And so I literally spent my days on the floor, oh, on the rug, the you know, ones. half of the students crying, other half, you know. <laughs> but um, but in my experiences um, in inner city schools, I developed, I developed rather a waiting list every year mm. because um, many of the students that I taught, many of the boys that I taught didn't have a figure a male figure that right. would influence them. And so, uh, like, like, male, like female to female, men and boys speak a language yes. that only we understand. And so, a lot of times, my presence was the difference between the student difference. being successful yes. or not. That's um, amazing. I didn't have a such thing as send them to the principal's office. Yes, yes. Simply because I understood what they were going through. I was one of those students. So I, when they have certain expressions, I knew what that expression was. Yes. And I could use that to help students move forward. Okay, so let's take a minute to handle this, mm -hmm. but here's why we're here. Wonderful insights. I'm looking forward to hearing a few more stories Absolutely. about your time in the classroom and, and hearing a little bit more about the vision for the education division. Yes. But right now we're gonna take a short break. So please stay tuned. We'll be back in a few moments with more of this intriguing discussion. But in the meantime, enjoy a selection by the world famous Russ College a cappella choir under the direction of Dr. Arlandra Harvey. Welcome back to the Bearcats Den with President Taylor. I'm your host, Dr. Ivy Taylor of Russ College, and our guest today is Dr. Merrick Seymour, Dean of the Russ College Division of Education. Thank you. Dr. Thank Seymour, you. I've been enjoying our discussion. You talked during the first segment a little bit about a vision for an academy for males of color in education. Mm -hmm. Would you talk a little bit more about that? Sure, sure. So. Uh, Visually, it's not a, a surprise that uh, black men are not very visible in some classrooms. Research even shows that 
two percent and I'm almost afraid to say maybe now less than two percent mm. of all educators are black males mm -hmm. and we understand what research has shown the impact of a male being in the presence of children early in, in mm -hmm. their education experience and so to help address that um, there is the Academy for Males of Color in Education and its design is to again attract males, black males, to the profession. Mm -hmm. But we understand that because um, uh, the way that we're wired, we process things differently, uh, we understand things differently, um, and so uh, the, the design of the program is to support males of color through an, a preparation program itself mm -hmm. um, in a way that speaks to their needs to complete. But then in addition to uh, just attracting them and supporting them, we want to make sure that they become qualified and plant them in classrooms where they'll remain as professionals. Uh, unfortunately, there are some barriers that, that, that cause individuals, males of color, to, to leave the classroom. And so we want to, while they're here, equip them with what it takes to stay in a classroom, mm -hmm. to stay in education, to understand what's the bigger picture mm -hmm. for, for a male educator. And so this program is designed to address those needs that sometimes get overlooked when it comes to a, attracting men, males of color, to, to uh, the profession. Uh, we want to uh, address those needs that sometimes get us uh, in the weeds of, or, or allow us to fall through the cracks yeah. and not finish a program or be certified in a program um, and graduate from a program and, um, and to, you know, to land a job, a career that, that they'll remain in. And so this program is designed to sort of answer and undergird all of those issues. Give us some example of what some of those needs and challenges might be. So a lot of times, um, males, even though they get to college, they still have a sense of need to support their families. Okay. So if by chance a student is working, a lot of times much of his resources are going to go back home, mm -hmm. which then causes a, a lack mm -hmm. while here, mm -hmm. while at the campus. Then a, another situation is um, just the language, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's being used, the jargon in, in education is uh, in many cases designed by uh, yeah, fostered by, perpetuated by women. And so mm -hmm. the language <laughs> is a barrier so, okay. uh, sometimes. Okay. And again, males of color, we, uh, we put a time limit. There's a, there's a ticker within mm -hmm. us. And if we don't see success by a certain time, mm -hmm. we're done with that. Mm -hmm. And so that becomes a challenge when uh, a male student is used to class next, class next, class next, uh, next. But when he doesn't see that degree soon, he could start thinking like, this is not for me. Mm -hmm. Not understanding that, wait, just one more heel mm -hmm. and there's a stage. And so the, the idea is to help them prepare for that, the process. Um, yeah, I remember in, in undergrad myself, uh, one professor said, you've got to trust the process. Mm -hmm. and, and then someone else, even when I was doing my terminal, someone else said, you've mm -hmm. got to trust the process. Mm -hmm. And so this, this type of uh, intrusive mentoring mm -hmm. um, really gets into like, uh, where are you? Why aren't you? Okay. <laughs> what are you doing about? Um, yes. and, and fortunately slash, slash fortunately, that's the way we're, we're programmed. Okay. We look for another male uh, to lead and to guide us um, to being who we are designed to be. And so that's what this program okay. is designed Sounds to Sounds like an effective strategy. <laughs> I know one thing that is a barrier, not just for males of color, but also uh, women as well, is uh, studies show that African Americans tend to um, not um, do as well on standardized tests. And there are some tests that are required for our teachers to be certified. Will you tell us a little bit about the test and some of the context related to our students' um, performance on the test? Sure. So in the state of Mississippi, and in many states, uh, there is, a, there is a, an exam or a test requirement to get uh, to be admitted officially into a preparation program. Mm -hmm. And then there is a, a test requirement to for licensure to okay. essence, to move out of a program, okay. right? And a lot of times, our, you're right, our students have trouble with the entrance exam. Mm -hmm. um, even though it is um, similar to ACT, it's, it's core. We call it Praxis Core. Mm -hmm. And it really, it, it really it evaluates the student's capacity in English writing and math. 
Mm -hmm. And so uh, we encourage our students to take that uh, that Praxis One immediately after they finished Gen Eds, mm -hmm. while everything is still fresh mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on their minds. But what we found was that our students don't have a challenge with being, uh, uh, don't have an issue with being capable of passing a test. It's understanding the language of the test. Mm. It's how to approach the test. And okay. many standardized tests, uh, it's, there's the language, there's the construction. So what we've decided to do as a division is we look at Praxis One and Praxis Two. Once this, uh, we prepare students freshman, sophomore year to, to take Praxis One, it's an academics test, mm -hmm. right? But when it comes to Praxis Two, what we've decided to do is to break down the components of Praxis Two mm -hmm. and embed it into courses to look just like Praxis Two, mm -hmm. so that when they sit for Praxis Two, they're not shocked at what they see. Mm -hmm. They're not afraid to approach it, to go through the process. Uh, many times, you know, there's that lead-in statement of a question, and then there's the real question. And many times, students will look at the first part of the question mm -hmm. and not answer the actual question. And so, what we again, we've decided to take a look at how, are, where are students doing well? Where do we need to brush up, shore up what we're doing? But how do we embed what's expected at the end of the program mm -hmm. into our program? Um, and research has shown um, that that typically boosters uh, the success rate of students who go out and, and take practice too. Okay. Out of our test. Yeah. okay. So it's Wonderful. not a matter of can we, but it's yes. how do we. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So we just need uh, more preparation, absolutely. more focus on understanding why students have difficulty absolutely. with the test. Yes, okay. absolutely. And so are most of the students who are in the program now, do they arrive knowing they wanted to be education majors? Or do you all do recruitment? Um, talk to us a little more about sure. the student so, body. So you do have so those students who are, gosh, second or third generation educators. Mm. They come to Russ College, I am going to be mm -hmm. a teacher. And mm -hmm. they, you know, they come in with all of the excitement. Mm -hmm. and, and so, yes, so that's one part. But mm -hmm. then there are other students who stumble upon, mm -hmm. gosh, I think I can do this. And mm -hmm. a lot of times students are not aware of what they really want to do. And mm -hmm. so what we're doing this year, we're having what's called Education Week mm -hmm. um, within the next couple of weeks, I think it's scheduled, where we literally put the education division on display. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we talk about, we invite students or we will invite students to come in mm -hmm. and to see what we're all about. And not necessarily to just be quote unquote a teacher, but to be an educator. Okay. And what does an education degree get you? Where okay. can it take you? Okay. What does a salary look like? To expose what yes. you know, what it means to be an educator. Um, you know that, that, that society is changing mm -hmm. and so must our program. And so as a result, we have to extend the definition of an educator. Mm -hmm. um, we have to extend the experiences of those who are going through our program. Mm -hmm. And so, we're, so one way of recruiting students is to, uh, to showcase the whole profession of education and not you know not the YouTube video version of of mm -hmm. education mm -hmm. but what it really means to be an educator from from top to bottom from left to right as we approach the end of our uh, chat will you just talk a little bit about the role that technology plays in uh, being a, a 21st century educator sure so again COVID, uh, the, the pandemic really thrust us into a, a different place mm -hmm. around the world. Um, and education, uh, for education rather, technology was that vital piece that, that kept the line connected. Mm -hmm. And so as a result, our educators have to be prepared to go from the reading center being a, a bookcase of books mm -hmm. to a gathering of iPads. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, we have to go from, you know, back in the day when there was the green chalkboard and the chalk mm -hmm. to now a smart board. Mm -hmm. And not just the teacher being able to use it, but the mm -hmm. teacher now being able to teach the students how to use the smart board mm -hmm. in front of the class. And so for, for us, uh, in our division, we're constantly integrating the use of technology even in preparing our educators. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our platform is Blackboard and so we maximize mm -hmm. Blackboard, not just where a student just comes in and clicks in, mm -hmm. but how, do, how would you use this same medium mm -hmm. as an educator? We also want to expose our students to different methods of instruction that local school systems are using. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, some school systems may have a platform where you build the entire curriculum yourself versus others who have pre-built programs. We want our students to be flexible, even with technology. How do I take what I've learned at Russ College yes. 
and apply it to whatever uh, situation that I'm placed in as a professional. Well, I think that was an important yeah. point because technology is such a backbone to everything that we do and we want to make sure that the viewers know that we're training teachers for the 21st right. century. And right. also, I hope that I'll get an invitation to the Education Week. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Uh, also, First we invitation. should think about inviting some of the maybe paraprofessionals in the Absolutely. nearby school districts Absolutely. as yeah. well because they it may decide they want to come back to school. That's it's right. never too late to come back to school, and we do have some of our classes is available online, absolutely. right? Absolutely, yes. Absolutely okay, is. wonderful. Well, Dr. Seymour, I really have enjoyed our chat and learning a little more about your vision and some of the things that are happening in our exciting education program here at Russ College. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. That's all for today. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.